Imagine a perfect circle of radius R rolling along a straight line without slipping. And imagine a tiny dot painted on the rim of that circle like this point P. As the circle rolls, this point P traces a beautiful curve like this called a cycloid. Look at it again. Now, what do you think will be the area of this cycloid? The end result is going to shock you, so stay tuned till the end. So first of all, how to describe the position of point P as the circle rolls? For that, let T be the angle through which the circle has rotated, measured in radians, starting from the moment point P was at the contact point with the ground. As the circle rolls one full turn, T increases from zero to two times pi. Two important motions happen at once. You can see that the circle's center moves forward along the straight line because the circle is constrained to roll along a straight, flat surface without slipping. And point P moves around the circle relative to the center. The forward motion of the center, or the x-coordinate of the center, is easy to calculate due to the condition of pure rolling, which specifies that the circle moves without slipping on the ground. Because there is no slipping, the horizontal distance the circle travels along the ground must be exactly equal to the length of the circumference arc that has been unwound or laid out onto the ground, or this one. Look at it again. When the circle rotates through an angle of T, the length of the arc that has been unwound is calculated as the radius R times the angle T based on the arc length formula. Now since this is R and this is angle T, so the length of this piece will be equal to R sine T, right? Therefore, the length of this piece will be equal to RT minus R sine T and thus the x-coordinate of point P will be equal to RT minus R sine T. Noise. Now finding the y-coordinate of point P is super easy. This is R, and this side length is equal to R cos T, right? Therefore, the y-coordinate of point P is simply R minus R cos T. So we have x equals this and y equals this. These two expressions together are the parametric description of the cycloid, where both x and y are in terms of a single variable t. Keep in mind that t runs from 0 to 2 times pi for one full arch. Great. Next, if you have a curve above the horizontal axis described by y as a function of x, then the standard way to find the area beneath it, from some left point a to some right point b, is using a definite integral from a to b of y times dx, right? Now, how to find this area? We have both x and y in terms of t. So somehow, we need to convert this area equals integral of y times dx into parametric form. But how to do it? When x and y are both functions of t, the differential dx can be written as the derivative of x with respect to t times dt, and we evaluate that from t equals 0 to t equals 2 times pi. This is a straightforward change of variable in the integral. Now compute the pieces step by step. Recall x equals rt minus sine of t and y equals r times 1 minus cos of t. Differentiate x with respect to t. The derivative of r times t is r and the derivative of minus r times sine of t is minus r times cos of t. So the derivative of x with respect to t equals r times 1 minus cos of t. Notice this derivative equals the expression we already have for y. Therefore, when we multiply y by the derivative of x with respect to t, we get a simple square. So the area becomes r squared times integral 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus cos t, whole square times dt. All the heavy work is done, and now we just need to solve this simple integral. Expand this to get this. Now separate all the terms like this. This integral is 2 pi, and integral of cos from 0 to 2 pi is 0. Now for this part, 
use the formula cos squared t as 1 plus cos 2t over 2 and integrate it to get pi. Putting these results together, this integral equals 3 times pi. Therefore, the area of this cycloid equals 3 times pi r squared. Oh my god! The area of the circle that generated it is pi r squared, and thus the area under one arch of the cycloid equals three times the area of the circle that generated it. Isn't this super duper cool? If you enjoyed this video, share it with someone you care about and make learning a daily habit. So good!